I'm just going to speak to something that the Lord has been speaking to me on for offering. That's just been rolling around in me. And um, it's just this question. What do I do when it seems like famine? And this can be financially. This can be in many areas of life. How many of you feel like you've ever experienced kind of famine seasons or seasons where you're looking and going, I don't have enough there or what's going on here? Do you know we have an answer? And the answer isn't sitting and thinking about it more. <laughs> oh, we're all guilty of that, right? Sitting and thinking about it more and thinking about it more and thinking about it more. And how many of you know that gets us absolutely nowhere besides more full of care, more full of frustration. But the word has an answer. So I want to go um, first to Genesis 26, 1 through 5. And um, I'm going to read this. I think they have it up in the... ESV, but I'm going to read it out of the BSV. Sorry, let me get there. So Genesis 26, and it says, Now there was another famine in the land subsequent to the one that had occurred in Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines at Gerar. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Egypt. Settle in the land where I tell you. Stay in this land as a foreigner, and I will be with you and bless you, for I will give you these lands to you and your offspring. And I will confirm the oath that I swore to your father Abraham. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and I will give them all these lands. And through your offspring, all nations of the earth will be blessed. Because Abraham listened to my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. So what do we see here? Not only did Abraham go through this very thing, but his son, we see Isaac, went through the same thing. What was there? There was famine. In other words, you look around and you see what? Lack. You see not enough. And I love this. Um, so he received instruction from the Lord not to leave his country to go to Egypt because of the famine that was in his country. So people were migrating to Egypt at this time for greener pastures. How many of you know there's often times where if things want to promise you greener pastures but how many of you know the green pasture is where the word is it's what God has spoken to you and so oftentimes what makes sense in human wisdom is not what God is asking us to do so Isaac sought to leave Gerar because obviously Egypt looks better greener pastures there there's famine in the land but what does the Lord tell him to do the Lord tells him to stay planted stay there and so um he tells him about the blessing with his father Abraham, which I'm sure was not the first time that Isaac had heard that. And then let's go down to verse um, 12 through 14. It says, now Isaac sowed seed in the land, or you could say, now Isaac sowed seed in famine. <laughs> and that very year he reaped a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him, and he became richer and richer until he was exceedingly wealthy. He owned so many flocks and herds and servants that the Philistines envied him. So I love this because what, did, what would have happened to Isaac? He thought greener pastures was in Egypt. But God told him, no, you stay here during famine and not just stay here and bunker down, but sow. And you know what the enemy wants to tell you to do in famine? Hold on. Hold on to it. But do you know you always have seed to sow? So this is what the Lord's been speaking to me. And you can ask Pastor Nate. I've been walking around saying it. And Isaac sowed in famine. So you know what? When you feel like you're not seeing what you're supposed to be seeing, sow a financial seed. When you see what you're not, you, it's not looking good, sow the word. Sow in famine. You always have a seed to sow. Okay, sorry, I'm almost done, but I just want to, okay, and then Genesis, um, we'll go to um, verse, sorry, just a few verses down, 28 and 29. It says, we can plainly see, okay, so this is the people talking, we can plainly see that the Lord has been with you, they replied. We recommend that there should now be an oath between us and you. Let us make a covenant with you that you will not harm us just as we have not harmed you but have done only good to you, sending you on your way in peace, and now you are blessed by the Lord. So not only was Isaac made richer and richer through sowing, which naturally people would say, you can't become richer and richer by giving. 
But in God's economy, you can. Generous, generosity. And so what do we see? Not only that, but then it spoke to the people because he was on display big time. Because there was famine all around, but yet Isaac was rich. And it spoke to these people so much that they're like, hey, something's different about you. And, you know, as a matter of fact, we should probably make a covenant here because I don't want to be on your bad side. (laughs) They recognize the blessing of the Lord. So Isaac followed the Lord's instruction, and the result is penned for us here in this passage, that he became very great, so much that the Philistines envied him. Following the leading of God's spirit for your life, there's no other way to greatness and success besides following God's plan, his instructions and will and purpose for your life. It makes no difference the pressure you're under. Yield to the spirit for answers. Don't make impulsive decisions based off of what you see. Don't be money-led. Don't be good (laughs) deal-led. Consult and trust him for guidance. So what do we see? You can't just follow. We see this with Moses. You can't just follow the same thing every time. It's not a formula. It's called being spirit-led. And he's going to direct you what to do. And every time it will probably look different. But every time it's going to involve some type of sowing. So our relationship with the Lord is a faith relationship. It's not based on our five senses, and it's not performance-based. The Lord is always trying to get us to recognize and acknowledge the fact that he himself is the beginning and the end, the author and the finisher, the creator and master of all, our source and supply. If you trust in yourself, you can try your best and never accomplish what you could accomplish through simple faith in God and obedience to his word. Sowing seed when you can least afford to is a powerful demonstration of your faith and gives God a mighty opportunity to prove himself strong on your behalf. So what do we see here? When you're dealing with famine, number one, you sow. And then last verse here really quick. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, Give thanks in every circumstance, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. You know, so many times we ask, well, what's God's will for me? What's God's will for me? Here's a scripture that says God's will for you. Give thanks. So when you see famine, what do you do? You sow. What do you also do? You give thanks. You give thanks to the Lord. You start recalling all the times he's been faithful. You start looking at every good thing in your life, not what you don't have, not the famine. You look at the source. And I can sow when I know where my source is. Amen doesn't matter what it looks like. I have his word and I have him with me, who is the source of every good thing. Amen. All right, let's pray. Father, we worship you. We thank you so much tonight. We thank you for the blessing of the Lord that is upon this people, upon this house. We never lack. We never lack. Just say that tonight. I never lack. I don't fall short. I have more than enough. I am generous. I am a sower, I am a giver, therefore I am blessed. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we thank you for the blessing of the Lord upon every marriage, upon every family, every relationship, every business, every job. We thank you, Lord, that the blessing is on this people so much that others say, wow, look at the blessing, look at our good God. Thank you, Lord. More than enough to preach Jesus, everyone, everywhere. We thank you. Abundance in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, y'all can go ahead and give.
man, I'll tell you, there's just a sweet presence here tonight. I don't know if I'm still, if there was still reverb on this mic a little bit uh, from Pastor Evan, but my voice and my ears don't do well with reverb. So if you'll just double check that for my own mind sake. How many know it's easy sometimes to get mindy or distracted when you're trying to be here, you know? Um, but tonight we're going to, uh, we're kind of going to bring a, I'm not going to say a close, but um, we're going to transition from uh, a series that we've been on Wednesday nights talking about divine healing. This is going to be the wrap up of it. And uh, last week we talked about um, how you and I receive from the Lord and we don't, and how we recognize him and how we don't, we don't look to the things that are seen. And the Lord was transitioning us to learn to recognize him according to his word. And so that's what we're going to do tonight is we're going to spend time just receiving life tonight. Um, and so we're going to read some, we're just going to read a bunch of scriptures. But before I do, I'm going to, I, uh, I'm going to kind of set, set some stuff up and then we're going to read a bunch of scriptures. And I say we, I'm going to read them out loud. You can read them as out loud if you want. You can whisper them to yourself. Um, and I believe that there'll be just a sweet uh, presence. I'm reminded of something that um, <clears throat> Billy Graham would always say. He said, um, it, 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 always, it, it always amazes me how when somebody simply reads the word of God, you know, he says, reads the word of God with authority or underneath, you know, that it, as the spoken word of God, how God supernaturally takes that and drives it into the human heart. And we put so much emphasis sometimes, especially in this day and age, on the latest and the greatest, and on orators, people that can speak and communicate and tie things up and put them in a bow and hand them to you in a package or, you know, tickle your ears. And uh, I mean, I've seen things on Facebook. What church do you go to? Oh, come to this church. It's not boring. Come to this church because like, like, where's the word? Where's the word? Where's the word? And so tonight, the title of tonight's message is, is more than a title. It's, it's really, um, it, it's, it's an answer, receiving life. So when you're looking for life, we're, we're going to talk tonight about receiving life. Um, we know that 1 John 5, 4 says this, that for, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our, our faith, our faith. And tonight, or really today, uh, uh, I was going to, I thought I had the, today's message fully lined out last week. Um, and so I kind of was going to get a little, how many of you ever get some of those times where you think you got your stuff together and you got a little window of opportunity to do your things? Okay, I'm just only Pastor Nate. Um, so I was, I put on, actually put on some work clothes this morning, thinking I would be done with a certain time, by a certain time, and I'd be able to sneak out to uh, or my shop that we're, we're building, and my son had the day off, or he didn't have the day off. It was so cold, he didn't want to power wash, so he was going to be out there, and I was thinking, hey, make hay when the sun shines. He'll be there. I can direct him. I can get a hand, you know, like, and uh, yeah, it didn't quite work like that. Um, this morning, it didn't work like that because I couldn't just break away from ugh, my morning. I couldn't break away from where I felt like I needed to be, and uh, and really, it comes down to this, this statement that's written on my whiteboard is, what do you want to say to the people? What do you want to say to the people? And um, here's what I heard. I wrote this on my, I, he said, I love you. That's what he said. That's what I want to tell you. I want to tell you that I love you. We talk and emphasize, uh, and emphasize a lot of times on faith. But the Bible tells us that faith works by, by love. Okay. And a lot of times we, we, we jump into that place and we check our love walk. But can I tell you that your love walk source is his love for you? The love of God that's been shed abroad in your heart, it, it, it's his love for you. And um, I'm not going to get into the weeds here, but uh, the Bible, the Holy Bible, God's got the Bible. Okay, um, I know there's a lot of other writings. Um, I know that there's all kinds of ancient manuscripts. There's Dead Sea Scrolls. There's uh, the Book of Enoch. There's the Maccabees. There's all kinds of things like that. But there's one book that talks about God finding a man because he loved man so much that he had to find a man, and he found Abraham. This is found in the beginning of Genesis. This is why there's so much. There was a lot of time before God found Abraham. There's a lot. There was a great number of people. There was a flood. 
the earth was already full. And he was looking, and he, find, he finally found one. And this is, that's where we pick up in the Old Testament, in, the, in basically the early parts of Genesis. And the, all of the book is a love letter. And if we, so many times we want to know certain things, and we want to know, 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 we want to know. Can I tell you that what you need, and I need to know about God, you cannot grasp in knowledge. It's only found in love. And we're going to look at a scripture that actually says that. And so this is why the Holy Scriptures, and I understand its origin, and, and bottom line, you know, some people would argue, you know, well, it was King James that omitted and added this and blah, blah, blah. Can I tell you that these letters are written by the Holy Spirit, written by God, penned by men? Um, and, and, and can I tell you, if God could get, uh, it, it's a supernatural work to preserve and to, and to bring to about. Can I tell you that the Bible talks about even uh, you can't uh, you can't uh, eliminate this scripture, and this is why sometimes um, we, we in politics we, we do are talking and talking and talking. Unless there's the Lord's direction, we're off and we're distracted because the heart of the King is in the hand of the Lord, and He wills. Does that know what it says? And He moves. Can I tell you that that God is on the throne? Can I tell you God's never working from behind? Oh shoot, Satan did something. Oh me, what in the name of me is going on around here? No, and so the Holy Bible is a love letter, and it really is. Uh, it's it's something set apart, holy, set apart. It's set apart for you. It's set apart for me to understand about a loving God, a patient God, a God who worked with man's will for for so long until he could bring into the earth a man, Jesus, a God man, to pay the price for you and me. Yeah. And so this is why when we you know, quote John three sixteen, or maybe maybe to some degree, because of the way that humanity is, we commercialize things, and sometimes um, they lose their value, their luster, their holiness. Um, but God so loved the world that He gave His Son uh, for you and me. This is a, He's talking about the sh- demonstration of love and His giving. So, um, and so I want to ask you this question, and you don't have to answer this, but um, some of you will give the right answer Um, but I want you to I want you to answer this not give me the right answer but how you answer it because sometimes you know the right answer but it's not how you answer that have you ever said something at the wrong time maybe to your spouse or to your kids and so your wife comes and tells you or your kids say oh dad you shouldn't say that to mom or or mom or mom says that hey don't talk don't don't do that you just push and you're like I know you ever done that yeah, I know, I know did not equate to I do. <laughs> I know, right? So I, I'm going to ask you a question. You're going to tell me I know, some of you, many of you, um, but I want to ask what are you doing, okay? And, and so, um, or, or how, how is this outplayed in your life, all right? You ready for the question? When does God love you most? When does God love you most, Lisa? When does God love you most? When does God love you? When you're caught up to date on your Bible reading? I don't know. When you're in the slop of the pig pen, that's when he loves you the most. He needs to really give you extra love and then. Is there, is there a time? But we, we associate because of, because of our lives and because of our histories and because of so many things, a uh, story. Uh, maybe it's of our upbringing. It's a mom and dad. Maybe just of a mom. Maybe just of a dad. Maybe of neither. Maybe of grandma raising you. And when you did good, then you got the cupcake or then you got the, the attaboy. Or, or maybe you ne- didn't get the words of a- adoration and praise unless you just really hung the moon. And even when you thought you hung the moon and you did really, really well, you, they were still not what you were hoping for. And you were looking for that love. And can I tell you that every person is living for love? Can I tell you that God doesn't, there isn't a time that God loves you most? Because he loves you the most all the time. There's never a time, but yet in our, in, our, in our times, in our days, so many times we think this is when God loves me most. 
Now, is there times when he's more pleased and has greater pleasure? Absolutely. There's things that please him. There's also things that grieve him. But there's nothing that changes his love. And it's the same way, um, you know, having, having, um, having kids. And us, par- us parents, we could w- work on this. Uh, all of us messed up. All of us did things that we know we shouldn't do. And we would say to ourselves, if we could, at a 16, 18-year-old, what were you thinking? Um, can I tell you that our kids also would think the same thing about themselves the same way you did? Like, God dang, come in, I shouldn't have, you know? And so our, our struggle, so many times we, we can't assign them the guilt and the, the con- condemnation, but instead uh, what the Lord would say and or bring him back, hey, listen, buddy, I know, you know what? I know you messed up here when I was a kid. I messed up that way too. Is there anybody here that never did something wrong with the, with your girlfriend or your uh, boyfriend or or ever? Or, you know, maybe you, if you're not married, maybe, or if you're not together, okay. But if you ever dated again, you maybe you shouldn't have held hands, but you did. You know, I mean, you, you did something. Why? Because the spirit is willing, but the flesh <laughs> is weak. All right. Am I right? I mean, there's a good couple, but am I right? Yeah. Yeah. We had boundaries. We had we had a watchman 24-7. But can I tell you, we love the corner. A little smoochy. I don't know why I'm off on that, but I'm talking about this because of knowing how much you're loved. And I want to read this this next scripture. And we're we're setting up to, to this tonight about uh, we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. It tells us this in Romans, right? Romans chapter 10. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. But if you won't hear the word of God properly unless you first know how much he loves you. And his word is what also teaches you that. So many times we're trying to appropriate victory without uh, understanding clearly the source from which it comes. The, and this is why even in giving, we're going to talk about this in, in a few weeks, but this is why every time I, when I give, I'm really acknowledging my source. I'm declaring my source. And the, the, the way that I give, I literally acknowledge my source every time, okay? Um, just in any way, praise, adoration, not just dollars, okay? But anyway, First John chapter 3, 21 through 22, it says, Beloved, if our heart condemns us not, how many of you know? It doesn't say if God condemns you. It says if your heart condemns you. In other words, where you missed it, where you know. This is why sin is such a big deal. Can I tell you that God dealt with sin? Can I tell you that God dealt viciously with sin and graciously and merciful with people? But God is not merciful towards sin. Matter of fact, he obliterated it. He came and he defeated it. He paid the price fully for sin. He hates sin. Why? Because of what sin pays. Sin pays death. The wages of sin, it's, and it's still paying death. One of the greatest ways that sin pays death is in your own heart. And how your own heart condemns you and therefore keeps you from confidence and coming with and before a loving father. Or going with, I should say, in, in all your ventures of life. Going with a loving father. You are separated from him. Your, your, your own heart is bringing that condemnation. And therefore, you are estranged even though the price has been paid. And there's a way to him because of the blood of Jesus. So he says this, beloved, if our heart condemns us not, then we have confidence towards God. Can I tell you that what we've been ministering on for the last two and a half months on Wednesday night, it, talking about healing, can I tell you, what is shaken more often than anything else when it comes to this is co- is that confidence, Lord? If you're willing, if you can, if it, it like it is got like this confidence, but the confidence comes from a, really ultimately you and I understanding how much we're loved. Confidence comes, confidence comes from that. What the enemy would love for you and me to do or to have is have a heart that's condemned or see in some way where we are falling short or where we haven't instead of understanding how much the Lord loves us, how much he's paid for us, and that our appropriating promises is not based upon our works but based upon his. You're saying, well, what about that? You're never loved more 
at any one time where you got all the answers right or you got most of them wrong or all of them wrong. And so this is huge for you and I to be able to receive or to see the promises of God activated in our life because otherwise we're not confident. We're not confident that we can. We're not confident that he will. We're not, we see the condemnation, and then so many times when something happens, that is just, that's just the judgment. Most of you here probably would say this, God doesn't use sickness to teach us. But my own mistakes cause it, and so my own mistakes and my own shortcomings, oh, here's what I'm, what, I, what I'm more confident in, is my ability than his blood. My ability in, 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 in to produce for myself a work of God by faith and than I am of his love for me and his blood shed for me. So appropriating faith, it, it, we have to understand it, it's not something based on my performance. It, it finds its roots not in performance. It finds its roots in his love for me. And so this is why sin is such a vicious thing. To, to the Lord because it causes you and me to run from him. It causes us to run and hide from the source, the one that held, holds the answers, the one that w- has the ability to restore. It causes us to run and to not come confidently. And then even when we hear him say something because our own heart is not confident, we don't really believe it. Have you ever heard someone say, how does this, you say, how does this look? And honey, how does this look? Does this like make me look fat? And uh, and, 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 you know, you think you look fat, so your, your husband or your wife says, oh, no, you look great, right? And, but you're not confident, so you change the outfit. So somebody's words didn't stick. How could that be? How could that be? The one who loves you, the one that chose you from all the other girls or from all the other guys, just told you, you look good, honey. You look beautiful. You don't look fat. You look beautiful. Mmm, it's going to sicky now, right? Whatever you want to do. Like you, as much as you want to say something, as much as you want to tackle them onto the bed and say, you look great, they don't believe it. Because it doesn't matter what you said. It matters what was in their heart. And so you can sit and you can hear words all along, but when your heart is condemned, when your heart, when there's a word in your heart that you believe above that other word, then guess what? It doesn't work. And faith works by what? Love. Knowing how much God, so this is, God doesn't condemn you. He, the Bible talks about how he came to give us life and so that we might be justified through the payment of his son Jesus. So this matters. Okay? Let's go to this next verse. Confidence toward God. You uh, let's go back, so we, let me read it fully. Beloved, if our heart condemns us not, then we have confidence towards God. We need confidence towards God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him. This is important, confidence. No one confident. Because we keep His commandments to do those things that are pleasing in His sight. When we, when we have confidence towards the Lord, when we have confidence, when we know that he, when our heart doesn't condemn us, we have confidence towards him, whatever we ask of him, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. My confidence towards the Lord is greatly affected by, by my actions, is what he's saying. But can I, tell you, can I tell you this, that our confidence towards the Lord is not to be affected by our actions, but his actions and us putting our trust in what he's done? This is huge. Whatever we ask, we receive of him because of his commandments, because of what he said. Can I tell you, we're going, so many times we're going back to a place of works instead of a place of finish? Let me, let, me, let me just back up here. Okay, whatever we ask, we receive of him because of his. Let me go back to the next verse right before. Beloved, if our heart condemns us, then we have confidence toward God. Next verse. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments. Let me have your Bible real quick. I wish I would have pulled out. Hold with me. Okay. Let us not love... Okay, verse 18. Let Little children, let us... 
Little children, let us love in, not in word and in speech, but in, in action and in truth. And by this we will know that we belong to the truth. And we will, our hearts will assure our hearts in his presence. Even if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts and he knows all things. Can I tell <sighs> Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, then we have confidence before God. And we will receive from him whatever we ask, because we keep his commandments and do what is pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ. This is his commandment. The commandment is that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and that we should love one another just as he's commanded us. Can I, can I tell you that the commandment is loving him and letting that love of him Love others. The commandment is not, he's not, it's not all these commandments. The commandment is love Christ. Love Christ the fact that he finished the work. You and I, we couldn't. The law was given to show our weakness. It didn't do, do away with it. It just shows our weakness and our love for him. This is where it comes down to. So many times our confidence is in our own self-works, but God is greater than, our, than all, even our own heart. He's greater. It said this right here in verse 18. He said this. He said, little children, let us not love in word, but in speech and action and truth. And by this we will know that we belong to the truth. Verse 20. Even if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our hearts, and he knows all things. This is huge. So ultimately, here's what I'm saying tonight. It matters that you and I don't come to the Lord with a condemned heart because of what he's done in Christ. Otherwise, if I don't get that simple truth settled, all of his word, I won't receive. It'll be like my wife telling me that I, don't look, that I look good when I don't feel like I look good, and I'll just change my outfit. And you can hear, and you can hear, and you can hear, but it doesn't do you any good. You're just saying that. You're just saying that. You're just saying that. And faith doesn't come when you just say it. When you just say it. When, when someone just says it's lip service. It, it, faith, faith, even though it's God's word, you're not capable to catch faith is what I'm trying to say. Okay? Because you, you have a competing word. You have a competing word. All right? So Ephesians chapter 3, 14 through 21. I knew I should have put those other verses. I kind of got caught in the weeds there. All right, Ephesians 4, uh, 3, 14 through 21. For this reason, I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and earth derives its name. This is Paul praying over the church of Ephesus. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he might strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have the power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that cannot be grasped with knowledge or surpasses knowledge. That you may be filled to the full or the full measure and all the fullness of God. All the fullness of God. All the promises of God. All the fullness. It comes from you and I knowing how much he's loved us. But here's what he says. He says how much he loved us you can't grasp here. It's only grasped here. This is what we were talking about last week. You can't, their eyes were hidden from recognizing Christ. They walked with him on the road, but they couldn't see him. They couldn't see him. He says, I pray that you would be able to grasp all the knowledge, all of the fullness of God. How wide, how big. Like, you can't describe it. Have you ever had the Lord show you something, and then you try to tell somebody else that? And then you're like, blah, 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 blah. like sometimes that happens up here. You're like, ah, mm, well, mm, mm. And you like you just would have had to been there. Why? Because God whoo, breathed something into you, and He showed you something, and He didn't show you it here. He showed you it here. And this is what He's saying. This is what Paul's praying that the fullness of God in my life is contingent upon me seeing how much He loves me. That you might be filled with the fullness of God. How are you filled with the fullness of God? That you would know how much He loves you. Let's go. Let's go back again to verse. Um, 18, that you might have power together with the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, how long, how high, and how deep is the love of Christ. This is what we were talking about in 1 John chapter 3. That what is the command? To, to the love of Christ, to love Christ, and to love others with that same love. So we have to know how much we're loved, how wide, how deep. How, you can't receive it here, he says, 
to know this love that surpasses or cannot be grasped with knowledge. You and I can't grasp it with knowledge. And this is why tonight the title of this, this message is Receiving Life. Last week we talked about reception, catch it. Like where you receive, you got to catch it. you got to catch what God's saying to you. You don't catch it here. It's not a mind game. It's, it's a spirit. We looked at John 6, 63. His words are spirit and they're life. His words are spirit and they're life. So we're talking about receiving life. We're not trying, about trying to get something. We're not trying to appropriate something. We're talking about having our hearts and our eyes enlightened and that we would know how wide, how deep, how, how, how long is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge so that we would be filled with the full, to the full measure of what? Of the fullness of God. We, you and I, this is his desire that we would be filled to the full measure of, of the fullness of God. The complete gospel would be displayed in our lives. All the way to the finish, wherever the finish, the, the, the finish line is. It could, be, it could be anywhere. It could be martyrdom. And his, Stephen's face shined. It, it, it could be uh, it could be a hundred different places that the, the 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 end line for you and me is. But can I tell you, the gospel should be displayed all the way to the end. By no way should we be limited. We talk about this in uh, when we give our, our giving. But in no way will I be limited to serve my generation. I that there's something there's something so terrible about lack because you. The reason you're put here, it's like having a soldier on the battlefield that doesn't have bullets for his gun. It's this, and, all, and the bullets for my gun, for me to receive them and for me to fire them, it has its roots and it works by love. Like if I don't have that foundation, it doesn't work. It's like, it's like I'm on a battlefield without the bullets. Lack is that way. But can I tell you not just financial lack? Can I tell you lack of trust concerning going to all the world and preach the gospel? And these signs will follow those that believe. They'll lay hands on the sick and they will recover. They'll cast out demons. It the, the matters. Can I tell you the oppression is not just like, oh, that's just a, that's just a chemical imbalance. Can I tell you that there's spiritual oppression and there's a whole lot more of it? But I don't know if I can take authority over that spirit because I, I have lack of faith. I have lack of confidence because my trust and my confidence is so often in, well, I'm loved most when this happens instead of how much God, Christ loves me. And so I need to get this revelation tonight of how wide, how deep, how long is his love for me. Not here, but here. And this is why it's so important that I ha find my face here because when I'm here, this is renewed to, to think like here. I love what Pastor Bill Johnson says this. How do you know when your mind's renewed? Is because when the promises of God seem reasonable. That's a good word. To know that love that passes knowledge that you may be filled with the full measure of, the, uh, of God. Now to him. This is, this is huge. This right, it's just interesting how... Paul penned this, these words spoken by the Holy Spirit, spoken by God, right here. Now to him who was able to do exceedingly, immeasurably, more than we ask or imagine, according to the power that's at work within us. What, what power? This love? The, the Holy Spirit within us? Can I tell you? The, 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 what the power that's in us is the love of God, the power that, the, that he put in our hearts. Can I tell you that this is what the Holy Spirit works, looks like? Can I tell you the gifts of the Spirit are brought into operation through thoughtfulness? The gifts of the Spirit, when, when your eyes are not on, here, when your eyes are not here, you look at their you, 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 words of knowledge. When your eyes are looking out, when your eyes are, when you're, you'll see the gifts of the Spirit in operation because He works. If God is love, I mean, how do you separate these things? It's a spirit of love. God not, has not given you a spirit of fear, but a power and, and a sound mind. So the Spirit of God is, the Holy Spirit is, is really a spirit of love inside of you to bring about the promises of God that He 
gave us through Jesus Christ. Okay? Thank you, Lord. Now to him is able to do exceedingly, immeasurably more than we ask, think, or imagine, according to the power within us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. It's to be in the church. What's to be in the church? This power, this love, this immeasurably more than you could ask, think, or imagine is to be in you and me and with you and me. It doesn't come here. It comes here. He's praying that there would be this enlightening of the heart. And it's going to come by what? By not just a prayer, by putting, but by putting the word of God in us. Letting, letting, or knowing how much we're loved. So anyway, that's what I heard tonight is about lo- him loving us. Tell him how much I love him. Tell him I love him. Grace and peace, 2 Peter 1, 2 through 4. Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, knowing who they are, knowing how much they love you. Know, he says, through understanding, through grasping how wide, how deep. We just looked at that. He said, grace and peace is multiplied to you. So here, let me give this example. If you are with your father and you come in, your dad, and, and you're a little kid, and there's something that is too heavy for you, are you worried about getting that thing you know, up on the counter or getting it home? No, you're not worried. Why? Because there's ability there. There's grace there. But not only grace, th- there's peace there. You, you never once did you fret, how am I going to get that up to here, even though you couldn't, because you had your daddy with you who was going to lift it. Can I tell you, you don't even think about it because you had your daddy with you to get that in the car or to get that on the counter because you had your daddy with you, because you had your daddy with you. Can I tell you, you have your father with you. You have, he, he is with you. Your father is with you. He's, he's not against you. He loves you. There's never a time that he's going to love you less. He loves you most. Right now, he, he loves you most. And so through the knowledge of that, he says, grace and peace is multiplied to you. There are so many problems that we face that we're more aware of the problem than we are of our father. And grace and peace is not multiplied. What's multiplied to us or magnified to us is the problem. What's magnified is not having enough money in that account. And so now I wonder what I'm supposed to do here because I don't see that money. Can I tell you, you're supposed to, the magnification of those things, we know what we need. We need to know about God's love. We need to know about who he is. And we could look at there and we could see who is he. God is love. We, we, we read these. I'm telling you, this is huge. We, we look at all these different things. Now, 1 Corinthians, he talks about now faith, hope, and love. These three remain. But the greatest of these is love. This matters. This matters. And all of this Bible that we read right now, more than theology, it's a love letter. It's God's love for you and me. And sometimes we struggle to receive it because of the stand, not the standard, but, but the way that love was given to us. But love was not given as human beings from, from father to son or from, from grandparents or whatever it might be. Because I tell you that love was given to me from him when I was in full of sin. When I was, while we were yet sinners, he loved me. That's how it was given to me. Now, Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord. His divine power, his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us by his own glory and excellence. Through these, he has given us his precious and magnificent promises so that through them you might be partakers of the divine nature now that you have, and now that you have escaped the, the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. How does he give you these multiplied through the knowledge of him and that you would because you know how much he loves you then the promises of God that are concerning everything in your life you're like oh yeah dad's got that oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah hey thank you lord you're not de- you're dealing with this let's just lay hands on you the bible says lay hands on the sick and they'll recover oh you're not well well thank you lord we're going to just sow right here Thank you, Lord. Lord, I'm, Lord, you see that I'm lacking. I, I, I see them, that they, they need, are they in need. Is there anyone here that has a lunch here? Oh, my gosh, I want to just give you just a, a sneak peek glimpse at something. Can I tell you? Oh, I can't. When I, we're talking about giving, can I tell you, if we would learn to recognize who's with us, we would, 
the way that we would do things would be so different. I'm talking to myself here. The way that we would do things. Can I, can I tell you that, we're, and we're going to look at this in the, the coming weeks on a Sunday, but can I tell you when you give, the Bible talks about windows of heaven being opened. It's interesting when you look at when the woman brought the oil, or when you look at, uh, well, not the oil, but the meal, and she gave it first, and how there was excess of oil and excess of meal. I wonder where that came from. Could it come from a window? I'm just telling you that there's, and this is just a little little blip, but so you, you can't take this as doctrine right here yet. Um, but, you know, you can't hunger for what's not available. Can I tell you that there's windows in heaven? Can I tell you that there's something called Jacob's Ladder? Can I tell you that the world understands portals? What's a portal? It's a window from one place to the other. Can I tell you that the movies Monsters, Inc. understands that? Can I tell you, okay, can I tell you we just got done with Halloween and the devil understands that? Hmm. Does the church? Does the church understand that there's access outside of this realm into another realm? Can I tell you that there's access that you and I have access to right now? You you and I have access and there's ways to access outside of where where we are? We'll, we'll look at that, but this is this matters. How we give? Can I tell you one of the ways that, that give it? Love moves. Lo, the love of God is what moves. Can I tell you where God is? Where the love of God is? God is ready to move. When Jesus saw the sheep as without having, He said, "Give them something to eat." Can I tell you that that window was there, and Jesus knew it. That God was He just find anything. God wants to do it. You just find anything God wants to do it. Find a way to meet a need. Find a way to be a blessing. Find a way. And the, and the Lord would pour out wind, blessings upon you from heaven. He didn't say, we, so many times we just talk about giving. It shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressing down, shaking together, shall men give unto you. Can I tell you there's more than men in play in your in my life, or there can be? We'll talk about that, and, and we'll look at scriptures on that, and we'll go, oh, wow, okay, wow. I, you know, it's, it's amazing that, that the Lord knows about these things, and so does the devil. And so sometimes the things that are the really, really important that the enemy doesn't want you getting a hold of, he says, let's ditch this over here so that, so that nobody is, everybody's turned off on it. Like, if you send your offering of $100 or more today, you can receive your miracle right now. How many of you hated that? How many of you ever heard of that? Most of you maybe have heard of it, but you never actually saw it, right? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Healing evangelist on TV for a gift of $100 or more. Or you can receive your miracle now. Well, kind of. Kind of. When you and I give, we open. We're open. We're opening something. So there is a spiritual principle in play that was manipulated by man and ditched into a side and therefore closed. And can I tell you, for some reason, it was always attached to giving. But God did it that way. There's laying up for yourselves treasures. and I don't know. I can't throw the football. See that mountain over there? I can't throw this football quite high enough to get it to the heavens, but yet I can just lay up. Just lay up treasures in heaven. Because you don't need treasures when you get to heaven. There's gold everywhere. And can I tell you, treasures are the treasure that you and I lay up uh, in that context, it's not people. He's talking about money. Matthew chapter 6. Can I tell you that you and I, our access, when we give, we're making a declaration of where we're drawing from. And you can draw from, you can draw from Tyson and the chicken plant and make $18 an hour, or you can draw from heaven. You can Tyson wings or heaven's wings. I think, we, anyway. So grace and peace is multiplied to you when you recognize how much you're loved. And we, when you recognize how much you're loved and who's with you, you don't even think about some of these things. You have promises. You have a God that loves you, a Father who's given everything for you, and we know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more to our Father, right? If you ask, Sometimes we think we're better, a better God than our father. We're a better father to our children 
than, than God is to us. It, that Can I tell you the hang up? Our own hearts. That condemn us. And it keeps you and me from a place of operating as a king's kid. And one that is a, a, is a, a co-heir. Where I give from something that is my father's. Not just of something that's mine. Because if I'm in covenant with him and this blood, when I'm in debt, guess who's in debt? He's in debt. But when, I, when I'm in covenant, see, I, I, I would think differently. In other words, when, 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 I, when, I'm in, when I have a need, guess who else has? And my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. This, these are scriptures. Okay? Thank you, Lord. And... We're gonna we're gonna close, we're gonna do this right here. We're gonna end right here, and it's not the end, but we're gonna read scripture. Second Corinthians four thirteen. It is written, "I believe, therefore I have spoken." You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna teach this scripture, and then we're gonna exercise it a little bit, and then you're gonna go home and exercise it too. Because you know what we need to not do is only exercise it here and not take it outside these four walls. And I, I want you to talk to your, talk to your wife uh, when she's saying this and that, and it's not what the word says. Go ahead and, go ahead and tell her what she needs to hear, the word. Uh, wife, wife, when your husband's running his mouth about, go ahead and tell him what he needs to hear, what will actually help him, the word. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna love each other, speaking the truth in love. We're going to administer grace. Administer grace by putting the word in our mouths. Paul says this, he says in, in 2 Corinthians 4.13, it is written, and he says this, I believe, therefore I have spoken. Since we have the same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Sometimes we just hear that verse and we just think Christianese. Oh, you know, you just got to say it because you believe you got to speak it. Well, absolutely. But do, can I tell you where that foundation can, comes from? He's talking, he quotes really, really right from Psalms 116.10. Ten, that very verse, one sixteen ten. It says, "I believe, therefore I spoke. I am greatly afflicted." So here, here's that. I'm afflicted. I'm afflicted. Anybody going through a battle? Anybody have adversity? Anybody need to get through life? But God gave you a promise concerning this or concerning that, because He's given you a promise concerning everything that it pertains to your life and your life in Him. Listen, spiritual life, natural life. He's given you promises. Okay. And he says, hey, I'm greatly afflicted. Therefore, I spoke. I believed it. I'm, I believed. Therefore, I spoke. I'm greatly afflicted. Next verse. Verse 11. He talks about, the Lord's my deliverer. Uh, oh, maybe. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Yeah, you just got to keep going. What should I give him for all of his benefits? Everything that he's given to me. Does this not? Paul's literally quoting Psalms 116. I, I believe, I believe I've, I've, that, that, that I'm in a trial and I'm in adversity. I believe I'm in a prison and I'm dealing with this stuff all on every side. I believe, but I speak. Oh, his benefits. Oh, his benefits. And so he begins to declare the promise over the problem. And guess what? There's some change. It's important for you and I to put the word of God in our mouth, is what I'm saying tonight. When it comes to divine healing and receiving life, can I tell you, receive it, you don't, you don't eke something out, you just simply put the word of God, it's the seed does the work. The seed does the work. You just plant the corn. Just plant, just plant the corn. Just, pl just plant the seed. Just, just plant the seed. Just, are you strong? Are you, have you been in a battle for, just plant, keep planting the seed. Can I, and I want to just read a few scriptures tonight. Because I believe that there's just, when I was doing this today, there was just life blown to me. So like all of what I was teach, teach, talking on tonight, he loves you and he gave his word. He sent his word and the word became flesh. We talk about Jesus as God's love towards us. This is the word of God. May, but yet Jesus, is, this is his love towards you. Can I, can I tell you, when I, when I read this, I have to hear it as God's love towards me? I'm 
going to start in 1 Kings. 1 Kings 8.56. Blessed be the Lord that has given rest unto his people Israel according to all that he promised. He has not failed not one word of all of his good promise which he promised by the hand of Moses' his servant. Just to prime the pump a little there. He's not failed, not one word. Psalms 91, 9 and 10, and 14 through 16. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, even the most high, thy habitation, there shall be no evil befall you, neither shall there be a plague that comes near your dwelling. Because you have set your love upon me, he said, therefore I'll deliver him, I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer, and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him, and with long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. I'm reading that. I'm reading that. But what if I testified of this? What if it moved from just here to here? It might sound something like this. Concerning the battle that you're facing, you might just simply say something like this concerning this this little, I don't know, maybe you get a pain in your arm, maybe you get a pain somewhere, and it, the, the, the lie and the uh, fear is, I'm going to take you out. He said, Father, thank you. With long life, you'll satisfy me. With long life, you satisfy me and show me salvation. Father, thank you for long life. Thank you, Father, with long life, you satisfy me. Oh, Father, thank you that not one word that you spoke did you, did you not fulfill. We just, we're just quoting kings here. It is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. You know, he didn't pull out the whole scripture, but he did pull out the scripture. The Holy Spirit pulled up the scripture, and he said, put this on there. Receive life, the spirit of truth, the spirit of love, the spirit of power and love and of a sound mind. Pulls something up, and it guards the mind, but it also comes with the power, and it reassures you of his love. And guess what? It works by love. Psalms 103, 1 through 5, bless the Lord, O my soul. Oh, you struggling? Bless the Lord, O my soul. I'm telling my soul and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Forget not how he came through. Forget not what he's done for me. Forget not that he's forgiven my iniquities. Forget not that he heals all my diseases. Forget not that he redeems me, my life from destruction. Forget not how he crowned me with his loving kindness. And forget not his tender mercies. Uh, sat, you satisfied my soul. You satisfied my mouth with good things. So that my youth is renewed like the eagles. I'm not tired. My soul's not tired. Oh, Father, thank you. My soul's not tired. I'm not tired. I'm not tired. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Father, thank you for your mercy and your kindness to me. Thank you. You put the word of God. You just receive life. The Bible talks about how his words were life, and he and you do, did eat them. Like they, they, they bring, they bring such such joy to your soul. Psalms 118:17. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Listen, if you're afraid of death, it's because you're not done yet. Can I say that again? If you're afraid of death, it's because you're not done yet. Until you're finished. Until you're finished. Can I tell you, when, when somebody's finished, they, you know, here's what they say, I'm ready to go home. Can I tell you, when they're ready to go home, let them go and rejoice with them? Because that glory is greater than this glory. Let them go. But if you're not done yet, I'm not going to die. But I'm going to live. And I'm going to declare the works of the Lord. I'm going to live. i got a purpose here. I'm not done until I'm done. And I'm not done. But you'll know when you'll be able to say, it is finished. Jesus knew. Paul knew. God's not a respecter person. Grandma knew. Great grandma knew. Uncle Larry. You don't understand. They know. I'm done. But if you're afraid of death, you're not done yet. You need to put the word of God in your mouth and receive life. Just receive life. Let the word of God work. And maybe, maybe what it is, you don't I don't know what it is, but then you'll say, wait a minute, Lord, what am I to do? The works of like like and you might it might be it might be three things that he wants you to do. There was four there. So maybe one extra. Oh, 
The Word of God does this to you. It just does something here. It's here. Can I tell you this, this Friday? I don't know the outcome of the game, what it will be. But Alma's playing Shiloh Christian. And I have um, two boys that played, have played at football for Alma, varsity football. And this sounds spiritual. Football, church, Wednesday night, almost done. And we were reading the Bible. But here we are, Shiloh Christian. And Shiloh Christian was pretty much in Alma. Every year, just marked up, put it in the L column. You know, because they're hand-picked athletes. You're just going to go there, and you're just going to go there, and, you know, just, okay, just don't hit me too hard. Okay, we're, they're, they're going up, they're going up. Okay, great, let's just hopefully get to, you know, the, and we'll just let the clock run out. You know, like, get us into the mercy rule. Let's just get done with beating me, you know. That's how it's been seeming. That's how it's been seeming, and, it, and that's what I've heard. Maybe not those exact words, but you know what I heard? Well, they're going to beat us. They're going to beat us. That's just, it's like when you see Arkansas and they got to play against Alabama. You're like, okay, well, we might go 9-1 and one at the beginning of the season. Arkansas is supposed to, be, supposed to be really good this year. And here's what you say. Arkansas, they'll go 9-1. and one. That's a sure loss. What you believe matters. The other day, uh, Farmington, who Alma beat, beat Shiloh. Just the other day, two weeks ago, Farmington, guys that drive four-wheel drive trucks don't fly on jet planes. There was this meme, this kid getting off in his football gear, getting off a plane on his cell phone from Shiloh. Money, hand-picked, you know, D1 recruits, five-star athletes, all this stuff. And this other kid in his four-wheel drive truck going, hey. And Farmington beat Shiloh. Can I tell you what that changed? What changed? this. There was no one who drafts. There was, it wasn't, can I tell you it wasn't this? It wasn't the coach saying you can do this? It was the players that received something right here. You know what they said? We can beat them. What, 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 what changed? Something changed. It wasn't just, it wasn't just this. It was something in here. Can I tell you, I don't know what's going to happen on Friday, but can I tell you there's a bunch of kids who believe they can beat them? Can I tell you, when you receive the word of God, it's not here, it's here. It doesn't change this here, it changes this here. And it doesn't matter what's going on, you can, you can go through it with the joy that's set before you, that's within you. It, look, can I tell you, the junk is not out here. Can I tell you, when there's junk, it gets in here. But if you put this, the words of life in here, in here, what's going to happen is you'll just receive life. And where it seems like they have just been paying junk and paying junk and paying junk, you now can just be get paid life and paid life and paid life. And wow, God, thank you. With long life, you're satisfying me. Oh, I'm not done yet. I, I'm not going to die. I'm going to declare the works of the Lord. I don't know what he has for you, but he's got something before you. I'm going to finish my race. These things matter. Divine health. It's heaven's health. It's heaven's supply to you and me. And there's a different way to appropriate it. It's not by here. It's not by your eyes. It's not by that report that just comes here. It's by his words, John 6, 63, which are spirit and life. And if you and I would just receive them, and not just receive them, but believe them and therefore speak them, we change some things. It matters what we say. It matters. And if you're not I know about faith. I get that. But do you have faith? I know about faith. This is the Lord asked me. I know you know, but what do you have? Because you can only give what you have. I know you know. I know you can quote this, but what do you have? What's on the inside of you? Because what's been coming out of you is not what you say you know. What do you have? Well, I have what I put in. So what am I putting in? This is the, the statement. Oh, you're led by what you're fed by. Yeah. Yeah. And your mouth is doing the leading. Thank you, Lord. And last, last, there I got, I got so many, ver- I, I'm going to, I'm going to put this, I'm not going to because I don't know how to do that. Uh, 
I'm going to give you references for those of you who have notes or those of you who want to go back and take it online. I'm just going to give you references. And, and these verses are handpicked, and there's about 25 of them. But I guarantee you, every one of them, for somebody, there, there's, there's something. So I'm going to go back to the beginning. 1 Kings 8.56. 1 Kings 8.56. Psalms 91. 9 through 10. 14 through 16. Psalms 103, 1 through 5. Psalms 118, 17. Proverbs 4, 20 through 24. Again, Proverbs 4, 20 through 24. And you can, this will be online. Isaiah 41, 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am God. I'll strengthen you. I'll help you. I'll uphold you with just one of my hands. I'll uphold you with my right hand, but how about, I'll, I'll, don't worry, I got you with one hand. With one hand. I'll uphold you. I'll give you strength. With, yeah, I'll, 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 yeah, here. I'll just give you a hand. We serve a great big God. Isaiah 40, that was Isaiah 41, 10. Isaiah 53, 4 through 5. Jeremiah 1, 12. I'm watching over my word to perform it. Jeremiah 30, 17. Restore to health. Joel 3, 10. Joel 3, 10. Say it, I'm strong. Let the weak say, I'm strong. Call those things that are not as though they are. Let the weak say, I'm strong. Watch some change. Watch it turn around. I'm tired. Man, I'm full of life. Can I tell you, the, this whole tiredness and keep, is keeping people from fulfilling their assignments? This whole tiredness? We've never had energy drinks like we have them now. And they're, they're pretty good. There's this one. I had three on a hunting trip, and they were good. I'm just saying tired. No, no, I'm strong. Nahum, Nahum 1, 9. Nahum 1, 9. I love this. He said, it's not coming back. It's not coming back. I'm done with I'm like, he will make an end to this affliction. It's not going to rise up again. It's not coming back. It's not coming back. Well, you know, here we go again. Whoa, 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 whoa. what? It's not coming back. Well, why can I say this? Because he loves me. Why can I why can I partner with the promises of God? Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of Him and has given you and me His Word and precious promises for everything we face in life. And you put it in here, and even though it's stormy out here, because I believe I speak. This is what Paul said. He was in the storm. He didn't say, it's not stormy outside. He said, I'm in some affliction, just, but I believe. My, the benefits far outweigh the affliction. And so that balancing scale. These afflictions are here, and they're, they're kind of heavy, but now I'm putting those benefits. Ah, teeter-totter. Flip them off, you know? When the big kid gets on there and the kid, you better hold on. Some of y'all don't know about those teeter-totters. They're dangerous. Matthew, Matthew 8, 2 through 3. Matthew 8, 16 through 17. Matthew 15, 30 through 31. Matthew 18, 18 through 19. Matthew 21, 21 through 22. Mark 9, 23. B12. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. I'm doing this because I don't know how else to do it and try to make codes and stuff like that. You all can get, you can pick it up. Mark 10, 27. Mark 10, 27. Mark 11, 22 through 24. Mark 16, 14 through 18. Luke 6, 9. Luke 9, 9, 2. Luke 9, 2. Luke 13, 16. Acts 5.16, Acts 10.38, Romans 4, 
16 through 20. Romans 8, verse 2 and 11. 2 Corinthians 4, 18. We look not to those things that are seen, but the things that are not seen. For the things, it's just temporary. It's just temporary. It's changing. Because I got God's word on it. It's eternal. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. Galatians 3, 13 through 14 and 29. Ephesians 6, 10 and 11. Philippians 2, 13. Philippians 4, 6 through 9. Seven more. 2 Timothy 1, 7. Hebrews 10, 23. Hebrews 10, 35 through 36. Oh, that's a good one. Both of that hold that Hebrews 10. Hebrews 11, 11. Hebrews 13, 8. James 4, 7. James 5, 16. 1 Peter 2, 24. 1 John 5, 14 through 15. And 3 John 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and that you'd be in health and that even as your soul prospers. And then Genesis 1-1 through Revelation 22. I handpicked out scriptures that just are the promises. Yeah, there's context, but these are just promises concerning your provision, concerning uh, fears, concerning, there's so many more. But those are just some that are handpicked. And tonight, and what we've been learning about is God's, divine healing, heaven's healing, heaven's healing. I I just wanted to end with this. Let's not just limit what we receive with these eyes. Let's open it up to the expanding of the heart of what God's word says and let it be unto me according to your word. Be it done unto me according to your word. This We're coming into this season. It's so special. It's the coming of a king. Beginning of December, like the, the, the advent, the coming of a king, the coming of a king, the coming of a king. You know that came, that he came because somebody said, be it done unto me. Mary said this. She pondered his word. Where? In her heart. Can I say we need to ponder the word? Oh, thank you, Father. With long life, you'll satisfy me. I'm not done. I got to work to the Lord. Oh, and you just put that in there. And the word of God will be birthed into your life. It's that, it, the coming of a king. Amen. Divine healing. Heaven's, heaven's assistance in every area of your life. It comes from the word. And I apologize for going long in, in, in tonight, but glory to God. Um, we're going to go with this. Father, thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for the hungry hearts and for uh, the fact that you watch over it to perform it. Lord, I just thank you for a spirit of rest on this house and upon these people, resting in your provision, resting in your promises, resting in your love. Lord, I'm asking just as Paul asked, and I pray tonight that our eyes would be opened, that we'd know the hope to which we're called, but Father, also that we would be able to grasp, that we'd be able to grasp your love, how wide, how deep, how long, how high. And that we would be filled to the fullness with you. And this fullness would overflow. That we wouldn't come just to be filled again and again and again. But we'd move from being filled to overflowing. Father, overflow in this house. Overflow on these people. Overflow in these people. Overflow on us, Lord. Overflow through us. Out of bellies. Out of bellies, out of the hearts flow rivers of living water. Father, I'm asking you tonight for rivers of living water to flow from and to flow through and to flow to. Father, that there would, every promise from you, just a new way of approach, away from your love, away uh, from your heart. So show us, Lord. Show us how big. Show us how long. Show us how wide. Show us how deep. And just bring your fullness. Bring your glory. Bring your glory. 
in the homes. Bring your glory in the wombs. Bring your glory in the bank accounts. Bring your glory in the minds. Bring your glory in these bodies filled to the fullness. Filled to the fullness in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Filled to the fullness with strength. Filled to the fullness with joy. Filled to the fullness with peace. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Declare over your children what your hearts desire. Declare their peace. Oh, they have ADD. They have this. Well, what is that anyway? Everybody has that. Everybody has something. What what is that? No, that's called, I have a God inside of me. It might be some to my personality, but in no way will I be hindered. In no way. Can I also tell you this? That there's certain things that some kid that the world might call diagnosed in some some way. Can I tell you that sometimes that's actually absolutely perfect? (laughs) The way that God made it to be, to bring something to you and me that we could receive no other way. Don't give the devil as much credit. Don't give him as much credit. But if your heart wants something, if your heart asks them, then ask him and ask him for that fish. And he'll give you that fish. Amen. God bless you. Have a great Wednesday night. We'll see you Sunday.